Welcome back all the fans and followers of space fiction. The last time I looked at the Earth from the window of my spaceship, I realized how slow the production of a space station is. How do you want to progress in space exploration when you last connected a new module to the ISS about 100 years ago? The production of such a module takes an incredibly long time and costs even more. And I haven't even mentioned the fact yet that despite the whole effort, you can lose that module in a second during the launch to orbit. This is not the way how to do it. So let's look at what types of modules you make today, what are their pros and cons, and how modules should be made by a real space civilization. We will also consider which module would be most suitable for building a rotating space station. Ever since the USSR launched the first Salyut 1 space station into space, the way the space stations are built has not changed much. Whether it was the Soviet Salyut, the American Skylab, the Chinese Tiangong station, or separate modules for the Mir and the ISS station, the principle of building remained unchanged. A complete orbital module is produced on Earth under sterile conditions, which is then launched into orbit by a launch vehicle. This module then either serves as an orbital station itself or becomes part of a larger station. By default, this module is connected to a larger station either directly to another module or the module is connected to the supporting structure of the station. This way of building a station is good mainly because a large team of experts can participate in the production of the module at once. The module is also completed in pleasant terrestrial conditions. However, the preparation of the module down to the last detail is very time-consuming, so in no case can we talk about the mass production of such modules. If cars were made in the same way, only cars like Lamborghini and Ferrari would drive on our roads, but only one in a million people would own a car. However, the biggest problem with this method of building a station is the model size and weight limit. This limit is of course set by the capabilities of launch vehicle. Since such a module is very heavy, only one module can launch at a time and must not exceed the diameter of the rocket. In addition, due to their weight, it is very questionable whether such modules could be used at all in the construction of a rotating space station. The centrifugal force of the station could rip off such a heavy device at any time and thus damage the entire station. An innovation in the construction of the space station modules is an experiment with inflatable modules which were tested for the first time in space by the American private company Bigelow Aerospace. In 2006 and 2007, they successfully tested this technology on standalone Genesis 1 and 2 modules. And in 2016, an experimental beam inflatable module was connected to the ISS, which successfully demonstrated the capabilities of this technology. The advantage of inflatable modules is that in terms of size, they are not limited by the launch vehicle. In addition, before unpacking, they are not only small, but also significantly lighter than rigid modules. Their internal equipment is not carried with the module, which also saves the weight of the module at launch. And theoretically several inflatable modules could be launched at once using a single rocket. However, the big disadvantage of this module is that despite the use of special materials, the protection of the crew is not at such a high level as with rigid modules. Such a module also cannot provide the strength and structure of the station and therefore cannot be its supporting element. Use in a rotating station is also very questionable, as the people and equipment of the module will press on one side of the module with all their weight, which can be a big problem for its shell. 
In addition, under centrifuge force, the module should be strong enough to withstand the pressure of the artificial gravity. And that could be a problem in this case too. So would we be able to combine the benefits of both types of modules and start building space station with their modules on Mars? And could we use these modules on rotating space stations as well? The answer is yes. The strength and protection of such a module should be ensured by the external structure from outside and the airtightness of the internal environment will be ensured by the inflatable module from inside. The outer structure may consist of a folding structure which would then be covered with solid protective panels. These panels could be welded or screwed to the supporting structure. It just depends on which construction procedure is easier for astronauts. In addition, the supporting structure itself can have any dimensions in terms of length, width, height or curvature. The dimensions of the inflatable part should be determined in advance, but nevertheless universal, and it should be clear in advance how large the structure will be too. It should therefore no longer be a round module, but rather this inflatable part should have the dimensions of a block. After inflation the module adapts to the surrounding structure under atmospheric pressure and the crumpled walls would certainly not be completely in order. For the needs of the station, the inflatable part could contain one to four entrance doors. Of course, some of them can also serve as a windows. These would be the only and the main fixed connection of the inflatable part with the structure of the station. The life support systems can be additionally implemented into the module or it can be a fixed part of the doors. The doors can also be used to supply electricity and other resources needed for life and work inside the module. However, the inside of the module should also contain some points for anchoring the interior equipment. Whether it is a module in weightlessness or a rotating station module with artificial gravity, it will be necessary to somehow anchor the interior equipment to the module walls so that it does not float through the room. The interior equipment itself can be additionally brought by different spaceships. The inflatable modules should also have proper thermal insulation. It would be most convenient for each module to be managed individually by its own life support system and not centrally by one system for the whole station. It must also be possible to easily and quickly replace each such module with a new one. The doors will be a key part of the module during such a repair. For safety reasons they should remain closed but they should be easy and quick to open for the station crew. The individual modules should be able to communicate with each other through the door and in the event of an atmosphere leaking through the module wall, close the entire module. I have already talked about a suitable way to secure the modules against decompression in my previous video, which link you can find in the description below. In this way, we would be able to build space stations at a much faster pace than at present. All that would be needed is universal inflatable modules with predefined dimensions, quickly unfoldable supporting structures, universal cover panels, and also a full-time job classification as an astronaut constructor. It is a waste of human resources to make the construction of space stations carried out by scientists as they do today. Versatility is main key feature not only for the use of space inside the module, but especially for connecting the structural elements. And that is why the creators of space stations could take an example from the LEGO kit. So now you know that you can build your own space station pretty fast. So when I get back from the trip to Titan, I expect you to have at least 10 new space stations in orbit. Otherwise, I won't take you on a trip around galaxy. Thank you for watching and the next time I fly by the Earth, 
I will send you another new video from the world of space fiction.